Hey guys, <clears throat> so now I'm going to do a uh, Vegas and San Jose preview for round two. I know it's still round one, there's there's still two series that are left, but like, I want to get the previews up as soon as I can. So then like, anybody that wants to like watch can like, have them, right? So uh, I'm sick by the way, and I got my hair cut, so like, if my voice is like, weird, then yeah. My hair's gonna, I uh, should be dyed blue in about two hours. So I'm going to do a vlog, and that should be up later today as well. And then I'm going to have some clips from Saturday before the hockey game. And then, yeah, today is also game six of the Tron Toronto Boston game. Maybe I'll react to it myself. Like, if it goes to overtime or something, or, like, I'll, like, like react to the win. But I'm not going to film the whole thing again because I'm pretty sure my friend is not going to come today. And I don't really want her to because, like, yeah, like, my mom doesn't really want people here, all, like, over here all the time. So, anyway, well, let's get into this preview. <clears throat> so, again, I go to I'm sick, so don't mind me and my voice. So, San Jose versus Vegas Golden Knights. So first, I don't really know what to say because, I mean, like, both teams swept their opponents. San Jose was able to do it despite having games 1 and 2 on the road, which is actually like, really impressive. There's usually always one sweep in the first round, but we, didn't, but we don't usually get two. And then the two that, uh, and then the two that like, swept face each other, at least I haven't seen that. So to see that, that's going to be pretty lit because now I know it's going to be a great series. This is a, ser a series that I want to watch for sure. And I can't wait for it to be on, but of course you have to wait till round one's done. So, round one results. Let's go back to round one. So, round one results, game one, 3 nothing win, San Jose. Just whatever. 3 nothing win. Game two, 3 2 win. So, of course, that was a bit more closer, and I tried to tie the, the, the series. Unable to. 2 nothing San Jose going back home. Game three, 8 1 victory for San Jose. So, that was nothing. That was obviously all San Jose, so a 3 nothing lead. And then a chance to end it in Game 4 in San Jose, in front of their home home, home crowd. They were able, able to hang on, 2-1 victory over the Anaheim Ducks. So, pr pretty good, you know what I mean? Like, 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 pr like pretty good to... Especially the 8-1 win, like in the Game 3 when the team's down 2-0. Well, like that's like a really good thing to like make sure it's not close, like make sure they don't have all, all the chance. So obviously very good for San Jose, so they swept them. 3 0, 3 2, 8 1, 2 1, and that's it, done. So San Jose only allowed four goals in four games, which is basically one goal per game, which is obviously like really good. The most they allowed in a game was two. Um, but yeah, four goals in four games is not bad at all, at least in my books. That's actually pretty good. And then they scored 16 goals in four games, which is actually pretty good too. Because, like, usually you don't score 16 goals. Like, I mean, you like, five goals, not five goals, like, ten goals is, like, already a bunch in, like, four games. You know what I mean? So, like, 16 is, like, pretty good. So, San Jose obviously had some really good goaltending in this series, basically allowing one goal per game. San Jose had one shutout, and then two games where they allowed one goal, and then only one, and then one game where they allowed two goals. So, they outscored Anaheim 16-4 to in four games, which is pretty crazy. So, obviously, San Jose had a lot of success. Now, moving on to Vegas, who also had a lot of success. So, let me go through games 1-4. to four. So, game 1 in Vegas, because Vegas had a home ice this series. So, game 1, one nothing win. Just a goal in the first period, and, and, and that's it. That, that, that was the game winner. one nothing Vegas. And that's, and that's one shutout. To, and then, that's good, because like one a, a shutout to start the series. Not bad at all. <clears throat> game, game 2 in Vegas. So... 2-1, double overtime victory, so I was actually watching that game, and then I saw the action, and, and I saw the game to oh, overtime winner, I actually didn't know if the Kings were going to, like, tie it, but, I mean, I, Vegas was, like, all over them, so I did expect that Vegas would win at some point, like, like tri triple OT, double OT, whatever, and they ended up f finishing it in double overtime, so 2-1 win, so only allowing one goal in two games, that, 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 that's really good, and moving on to game three, so game three, three two victory in the in LA. <clears throat> so they returned to LA, and they were able to get a three two victory out of it. Uh, Los Angeles was up one nothing the, the majority of the game. All three of Vegas's goals came in the third period. One to make it one one. A few minutes later, I believe to make it two one, and then I believe, and then obviously it was like th th three one at some point. I don't think it was an empty netter. I think it was just like an, an, another goal, so they obviously did go with that. So they were able to score three goals, which made it 3-1. Uh, LA got one to make it 3-2, and then that's where it ended. So 3-2, three, three goals in two games, three goals in three games, basically like, like, like one goal per game. And then game four in LA, another one nothing victory. So two shutouts, one game allowing one goal, and then one game allowing two goals. So two shutouts, that's really good. 
So a one nothing victory, they were able to hang on to get the sweep in LA. So Vegas has only allowed three goals in four games, including two shots, which is obviously really impressive. Mark Andre, Andre, Andre Fleury has been amazing. So I can already tell this is going to be a series based on goalies. Um, <clears throat> so Vegas has scored seven goals only, but it was enough to win because uh, obviously um, LA had a really good. Like I, I was watching videos, and then like I heard that Fleur Quick's save percentage was so good that it's like. It's amazing that he didn't win. It's like, it's like unfair. It's like totally unfair that, that he did not win. He allowed one goal in one game, they lost. One goal in the next game, they lost. Twice. It's like he got he got totally robbed. Like that was, it's like almost it's like almost impossible. It's almost like I'm it is unfair. It's just like unfair that he never got even one win. <clears throat> Despite the amazing save percentage he did have. So both Quick and Flurry were outstanding in this series, a combined total of 10 goals by both teams in four games. Again, both goalies amazing, this is going to be a series of goaltending for sure, and um, getting traffic in front of the net to like block the goalie's eyes or whatever, you know what I mean? So that's that. So Vegas will have home ice this series, but it didn't really seem to be an issue for San Jose. When Anaheim ha had home ice, they were able to win 2 nothing. but in Vegas, this is not going to be a 2 nothing San Jose lead going back to San Jose. At least, I don't th I think so. It's either going to be, in my opinion, 1-1, which it should be 1-1, to be honest, unless some team has a 2-0 has a lead, which will shock me, because if there's a sweep this series, I'm going to be mind-blown. So again, for our first round, of course, Vegas went 4-0 and San Jose went 4-0. San Jose, it was their second franchise sweep, and then, of course, for Vegas, it's their first playoff series, and their first playoff series ended up being a first franchise sweep. The season series between b both of these teams is 3-0-1 for Vegas. So going through th th through the matchups, November 24th, 2017, Vegas 4, San Jose f Vegas 5, San Jose 4 in overtime. February 8th, 2018, Vegas 5, San Jose 3. March 22nd, 2018, San Jose 2, Vegas 1 in overtime. Vegas 1, and then that was, and that was the final in overtime. March 31st, 2018, Vegas 3, San Jose 1. So, San Jose only won by one goal. Vegas won by as many as two goals, but also one. Like, a few games went to overtime. Two of the four went to overtime, which shows these things are close, and then the two wins, and then the two wins that did not go to overtime, they were just by two goals. So this will be a good, a, a good series to watch, to be honest. So let's get into the, more of the preview. So on paper, the Golden Knights have the edge in this series, but only just. They have also they also have home ice, the, uh, home ice advantage, so the first two games will be played at the T-Mobile Arena. The performance of Marc-Andre Fleury may well be the deciding factor in this coming series. The hero of Game 4 and three-time Stanley Cup winner is easily the Golden Knights MVP. In San Jose's net, Martin Jones has allowed just four goals so far. This is likely going to be a series decided by goalies, which I completely agree with. So going on to the power play, so Vegas's power play is 8.3%, while San Jose's power play is 30%. So a big difference in power power play, Vegas has to stay out of the box. For the power for the kill, Vegas p power uh, penalty kill, 92.3%. So even if Vegas gets the power play, or even if San Jose gets a power play, their their or the penalty kill is so is it is really good. San Jose's penalty kill is eighty three point three, not bad, but of course Vegas's is higher. <clears throat> and to be honest, since this is a, a thing just set up by goalies, I don't even know if power plays will be able to like solve anything because these goalies have an amazing. So it, it's not it's going to be. I'm expecting overtime games in like every single game, and I do expect this series to go seven games. I'm telling you this right now. If it goes to four, I'm gonna be mind blown. Five, still mind blown. Six, understandable, but I'm I'm expecting and and I'm hoping seven games because this is gonna be a really good series. So the Knights may be rapid, but their opposition looks to be more dangerous in front of net. Nine different skaters have scored for the Sharks, and Thomas Hurdle, Marcus Sorensen, and Evander Kane have each netted a trio of goals already. The Knights have seven goal scorers, each with just one goal. The Sharks have the best, have the third best power play in the playoffs, while Vegas have the second worst. The Kings are the worst, but the Knights have the best penalty kill, so those kind of basically even out. The series will be the eighth time in NHL history, second in the past 22 years, that teams will play each other following a sweep. The 2011 Eastern Conference Final between the Tampa Bay Lightning and Boston Bruins was the most recent such matchup. San Jose is in the playoffs for the for, for, for the 13th time in 14th season. That's really good. 
and is two years removed from playing in the Stanley Cup Final, which I lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins in six games. It should be a really good series. Both teams are very good. Goalie's fantastic. This series should go seven games, in my opinion. Like, it, it really should. If there's another sweep here, literally mind-blown, like I said. San Jose has scored a lot more than Vegas, but in my opinion, that comes to an end starting this starting game one. All games Vegas played all ended by one goal. I wouldn't be surprised if this series went seven, seven games with every game going into overtime, which I did mention. San Jose won't win a game A1 like they did against the Ducks in game three this time. It'll be low scoring. It'll, it'll all depend on the goalies. But this should be, based on round one, I'm going to say it's a low scoring series. Like, I'm expecting 1 0 wins, 2 0 wins, and I, and, I, and I don't even know if I see a 3 0 win. I see 1 0 win or 2 0 two win. Or even like a 2 1 win or a 3 2 win, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so now we're going to move on to the goal scorers. So Evander Kane with three goals, Thomas Hurdle three goals, and Marcus Sorensen three goals. Those are, are the leaders for San Jose. Lo Logan Couture has two goals. Brent Burns has one. Eunice Donsquare one. Eric Fair one. Joe Pavelski one. And Timo Meyer one. The goal scores for Vegas is everybody has one goal. Like I said, so Shea Th Theodore, Alex Toot or Tuk or Tuch. Eric Halla, Cody Eakin, Eakin, James Neal, William Carlson, and Brian McNabb, all with one goal. There's no goal score with two goals yet. So if you needed any more proof that speed and skill is a burying big body hot is a is burying big body hockey, the sweeps by Vegas and San Jose in round one was the nail in the coffin. Both of these teams faced opening round opponents that had more standings points than them in the final five weeks of the regular season, but when everything was on the line, it, it was clear who was who the advantage was with. The Golden Knights have been a tremendous story all season long, and even after their red hot home record cooled in the second half, their improved road record made for an even more balanced team. San Jose didn't always didn't always look as good as they do now, starting the first few months as the lowest scoring team at even strength. But especially after the trade deadline and the acquisition of Evander Kane, the Sharks' offense took off and they had the third most goals at evens after February 26th. This series may come down to which goalie can stay hottest the longest, though. Both Vegas's Mark Andre Fleury and San Jose's Mark both Vegas's Mark Andre Fleury and San Jose's Martin Jones were stellar in round one, finishing with the top two save percentages. Jones has always been great in the playoffs, and Fleury has three has three Stanley Cup rings. So this again figures to be a battle of titans. <clears throat> when it comes to star power, the edge goes to San Jose. Even or er, though when Vegas was faced with a similar disadvantage in the opening round, it didn't matter. Again, the Golden Knights will face a team with the best forward, Joe Pavelski, and the best defenseman, Brent Burns, in the in the series. But un until someone proves this matters against the inc an incomparable team from Vegas, we won't worry too much about it. Now going into stats wise, so five on five. Vegas is 50.96% for CF, which is 12th in the league. 52.78 goals, 4%, which is 9th. Uh, 9.22 safe percentage, which is 17th. 8.38 shorthanded percentage, which is, which is 6th. And a 100.57 PDO, which is 10th. For San Jose, their CF percent is 50.8, so very close to Vegas's, which is 13th in the league. 48.75 goals, 4, which is 18th. In the league, a nine and a nine sixteen save percentage, which is twenty seventh, which is very close to um, Vegas's of nine twenty two, <clears throat> but they vary differently in ranks seventeenth, twenty seventh, a seven point five shorthanded percent, which is twentieth. So of course, Vegas is better in that department, and then a ninety nine point one three PDO, which is twenty fourth. So Vegas has the upper hand in basically everything, and all the, all all the stats wise, they have the Stat. They have like the upper hand in everything in stats. So for Vegas, the offense five point two one, which is sixteenth. Their defense five point six one, which is eleventh, and and their power number is five point four one, which is twelfth. San Jose's offense is six point eight four, which is higher than Vegas's. That's seventh in the league. Their defense is three point five eight, which is twenty first, lower than Vegas's, or like. Higher, yeah, yeah, lower than Vegas's, and their power number is five point two one, which is fourteenth in the league. So stats wise, they are pretty close. So mo moving on to more team stats, so Vegas is twenty one point four percent, twenty one point four, which is on the power power play, which is eleventh in the league, eighty one point four percent 
on the penalty, penalty kill. These stats I'm, I'm assuming is from the play in round one. <coughs> the thing I told you before I think was from the whole like season. So 81.4 penalty kill percent, which is 12th, 268 goals mm -hmm. for. Or wait, no, I think this is for, yeah, this is for the uh, the regular season. And then what I told you before was for the playoffs in round one. So this is, again, the regular season. So 268 goals for, which is 5th, 225 goals allowed, which is 8th. San Jose's power play, 20.6%, which is 16th, 84.8% on the penalty kill, which is 2nd. And 247 goals for, which is 13th, and then 226 goals allowed, which is 9th. The head to head record for Vegas is 3 0 1. For San Jose, it's 1 2 1. Now, moving on to the strengths. So, round one strengths for Vegas. As they have all the way through their surprising season, the Knights owned the Kings with their quick transition game end. Game end when challenged physically by Los Angeles, proved capable of playing with an edge as well. Through four games, Los Angeles and Vegas were one and two, were one to two in hits league wide. When they did go shorthanded, Ve Vegas's PK unit shut down the Kings 92.3% of the time, which could could continue against a Sharks power play that has been below league average this season. No one player, do no one player dominated on offense for Vegas, though Jonathan. Marcia So did get 17 shots, but its main strength outside of the crease is quickness and a quality of depth no one predicted. The round one strengths for San Jose, on the other hand, the Sharks, like the Golden Knights, are another team that proved in round one how easily speed trumps heavy hockey these days. Despite the Ducks coming in hotter, the Sharks d dismissed them in four games without much of a test, outscoring them 16 to 4. The Sharks actually allowed an average of 33 shots per game, the fourth highest mark in the first round, but Jones laid an early base for a Con Smith or Smythe trophy consideration with a 970 save percentage that was second to only Flurry in the opening round. San Jose's offense, which started the season slow, but was one of the top five in the league over the past two months, continued clicking against the Ducks with an average of four goals per game. The Golden Knights at X Factor. Vegas is here because of the contributions it has gotten everywhere in the lineup. But if there's one thing all recent Stanley Cup champions have in common, sorry, my answer, it's star power. If that trend continues, <clears throat> Vegas will at some point need a game breaker to bust out an offense and join Flurry in Con Smith, Con Smith talk. No Vegas players scored more than once in, in line of Smith with March or so and William Carlson. Yeah, wait. Sorry, no Vegas player scored more than once in round one, and only one player, Riley Smith, had more than two points. The top line of Smith with Mar Marsha So and William Carlson is where this player will probably have to come from, as they'll likely draw the toughest de defensive matchups. One of Al Alex Tuke, James Neal, or Eric Halla might need to do it from line two. Maybe Vegas can buck this trend as they as they're as they're wont to do. <clears throat> but recent history suggests at least one scorer will eventually need to stand out for them. The, the Sharks' sex factor? The Sharks look to have the depth to match up well against Vegas, but if they don't cut down on the number of shots against, Jones will again be challenged with a heavy workload. The 28-year-old has never had a, a, sub, a, sub, a subpar playoff season and is out of the gate hot, and is out of the gate hot again in 20, 2018. Sorry, I'm like stuttering a lot more and I'm kind of like sleepy right now. Through four games, the 22 high-danger shots Jones faced were second to only two Garask, and Jones' 955 high-danger save percentage was far higher than any other goalie who faced at least 10 of these types of shots. Now we're going to go to playoff team leaders, so for Vegas, so it goals, assists, points. So Vegas, Riley Smith, zero goals, three assists, and three points. Alex Tuke, one goal, one assist, and two points. James Neal, one goal, one assist, and two points. For San Jose, Logan Couture, two goals, three assists, five points. Joe Pavelski, one goal, four assists, which is five points. And Thomas Hurdle, three goals, one assist, which is four points. And now I'm going to move on to my prediction, which is going to be very, extremely tough for me. So again, <clears throat> Vegas is going to have home ice this series, but again, San Jose made it clear that it does not matter. Um, but the Sharks, um, the Sharks and Vegas is both like really good at home. Um... I'm assuming that from the 8-1 to San Jose win in San Jose, so, but 
This series, again, I'm going to say will go 7, and it very much should go 7, to be honest. If it doesn't, mind blown. Just... Like, I'm already mind blown because I thought the Sharks... I, I thought the Ducks would come back to tie at 1-1. I thought the Sharks would come back to tie at 2-2. You know what I mean? So, I don't even know what to really say, to be honest, because, like, this is going to be an amazing series. All, all I'm going to say is it will go 7, and because Vegas does have home ice, I'm going to say Vegas in 7. But it very well could be San Jose. Like, I don't take my word for it. It very well could be San Jose or Vegas. But I'm just going to say Vegas because Vegas has home ice. But again, the do or the Sharks prove that home ice it does not mean bullcrap to them, at least. So, again, I don't know. Game 1 and Game 2, when like the schedule for Round 2 has yet to be announced because Round 1 is still going on. But once again, Game 6, Toronto-Boston in Toronto tonight. So go Leafs go. I hope we can tie the series at 3 and force a Game 7. After, the round, after Round 1 is done, I have already started a notepad. Of, of my round one results. I'm going to do a, a, a review of round one once all the games are done. And then I will start doing round two previews, of course. This being the first one is starting already during round one. But yeah, so good luck to Toronto and uh, Columbus today. Hopefully they tie, tie up the series to force the game seven. And when the series is done, then I will do a round one review of all the teams. Like every, every like... I'll tell you all the scores, all the, like, my, my predictions, and then I'll tell you how it evened up with mine. Mm -hmm. So, I hope you guys like this video. I will see you guys in the next video. It'll, it'll likely be when my hair is blue, and it will most likely be the round one results. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're new, definitely subscribe. Turn, turn the bell on. And that's all I really got to say. So, I hope you guys like this preview, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.